So when will be the next Starship launch? Well, the FAA provided some guidance. Let's talk about it. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much once again joining me for Tea Time today. We have a little bit of misty morning and that is it. Refreshing, so good. I hope you're joining me with your cup of tea, a cup of coffee, hanging out, talking tech, talking photo, talking video. Today is the technology day. We're gonna be talking about SpaceX. We're gonna be talking about the Starship and maybe throw in some Starlink at the same time. The FAA gave us a little bit of guidance. I wanna review some of this with you. I think it's very important because it provides a new cadence or speed, if you will, on how SpaceX can launch their Starship tests or their IFTs. Right now we're on IFT3, it did a pretty good job. I did a whole video about that, all the goods and the bads, what ended up happening and my thoughts on it at the time ended up coming to pass. The thing was spiraling a little bit out of control, came in a little bit backwards and it burned up. <laughs> we saw a plasma trail that was unbelievable. It was beautiful. They had some amazing footage coming live right from the ship being broadcast through Starlink satellites. I mean, that's just cool. I think it was 4K video they were able to transmit right from the ship. It was beautiful, absolutely beautiful. The next time they launch the IFT-4, I'll do a live again. We had a blast and it was really great seeing all of you on there and having this chat while it was going on. Anyways, I was reading an article over on Teslarati and they were talking about the launch and the launch cycle and they brought up some things from the FAA, some things that they said, and I wanna bring this to your attention. Anyways, before we get into this article, I wanna say that if you enjoyed this video, even the least, consider throwing in a thumbs up. That is very, very helpful. Also subscribe if you're not, if you are, Thank you. Click right here so when I go live or when a new video comes out, you'll be notified of it immediately. And if you want more Starlink content after you're watching this video, I put together a playlist just for Starlink. There's about 256, <laughs> almost 260 videos specifically on SpaceX Starlink. Check those out. Helpful how-tos, tips, tricks, what to do, what not to do, what to buy, what not to buy. And most importantly, the why behind it all. That's what this channel is all about, the why. Also, if you wanna just say thank you for all of my hard work, there's a little button down here. You can give a dollar or two if you like. If not, that's perfectly fine. Consider becoming a member of the channel. That would be even better. If you haven't downloaded any of my eBooks, consider doing so. They are free just for you being here. Go to jcristina.com forward slash books. And finally, if you're looking for a VPN, look no further, check out Pure VPN. The nice folks over there gave us a promo code, which is jcristina, or or you could use the URL jcristina.com forward slash VPN and get 15 additional percent off at checkout. So all of the housekeeping is complete. Let's jump right into this article. It starts out by saying SpaceX's Gwen Shotwell, speaking at the Satellite 2024 conference, said the fourth test flight of the Starship rocket could come as little as six weeks from now. Interesting, six weeks, keep that in mind. If SpaceX were able to turn around the launch pad and go through the test campaign with the next Starship and Super Heavy rocket in that time frame, it would show an incredibly improved cadence in their ability to test the launch vehicle. I don't think it's up to them as much as the regulatory bodies. I think they got it, all right? I think they should be able to turn them around a lot quicker than what the FAA and the Fish and Wildlife and all the rest of the three letter regulatory bodies take to issue licensing. Anyways, that's my personal opinion. The article continues. Elon Musk chimed in later on X saying it would be possible, quote, if everything was to go right. Yeah, that would be the case. This would include everything from testing to licensing from the FAA or the Federal Aviation Administration, which has shown to be a fairly slow process. Facts. While the third integrated flight test or IFT-3 accomplished numerous firsts, there are still many areas for SpaceX to improve. The company wants to recover both Super Heavy and Starship by the end of the year, but first they need to successfully splash down Super Heavy just above the surface of the water and show that they can maintain control over the Starship while it is in space. That is a big, big issue. We saw it tumbling 
live, and I said it really looks like it's tumbling. It's not the camera on the gimbal spinning. It's actually spinning corkscrewing and then finally it flipped backwards it was actually coming in in reverse it was a hot ass mess anyways they're gonna fix it i know they're gonna fix it we don't know exactly what went wrong but at the time i was thinking that it was probably one of the actuators or multiple actuators one of the fins or something that wasn't working properly to be able to get that craft stabilized if you don't know it the ship the starship needs to come in like this all right belly first it is round so you can't see which side is the belly but if you notice the ship is very shiny on one side and on the other side it's very black well that black are like ceramic like tiles heat shields right heat tiles it needs to come in with those tiles facing the atmosphere right if they don't and it comes in in reverse it's going to melt the ship that's just how it is. So those tiles are on the underbelly of it, even though it's round, and it has to come in like this. But we saw that it was rolling like this, it was corkscrewing, and then finally it flipped this way, it was coming in backwards. Yeah, we can't have that the next time. So they'll fix it. Was it a software problem? Was it a hardware problem? Was it a combination of both? Who really knows? But when I find out, I'm gonna let you know, probably in a video. <laughs> Anyways, the article continues here. As seen during the IFT3, Ship 25 started a spin, most likely to ensure an even temperature distribution. However, when it came time for Starship to begin its first ever atmospheric reentry, Ship 25 was unable to orient itself correctly. Like I was saying, it ended up entering with only half of its heat shielding facing the plasma buildup eventually eventually tumbling and breaking apart. The plasma was absolutely unbelievable. Just to see it pouring off the ship, the amount of heat is just amazing to me how it just doesn't explode. Now I'm from the era of the space shuttle and I've seen the space shuttles explode live and it's really a sad thing where we lose astronauts. And that's what's so important about this heat shielding, this heat tiling that goes on. There was some missing tiles on the space shuttle, which is a major problem, ended up not working out well. The same thing holds true here. Those tiles are absolutely mission critical for that vehicle to withstand the heat while re-entering the atmosphere. There is a ton. Obviously, you can see that plasma pouring off the vehicle as it was going through. Once again, this was broadcast live using Starlink at the top of the vehicle. This is just amazing to me, but that's what they did. Anyways, the article finalizes with this. SpaceX is known for its rapid iteration, so it is very likely that these fixes are in place or will soon be. Whether they'll be software or hardware, like I said, it could be a combination of both. One bit of hope from the licensing side is that the FAA is looking to adjust the licensing process. Thank God. Kevin Coleman, the FAA's Associate Administrator of Commercial Space Transportation, these things get long, speaking at the same Satellite 2024 conference, said that they want to move away from a launch by launch approval and give approval for a range of launches, like a multi approval, multi launch approval. My goodness, finally which is what was originally intended when they reworked the Part 450 licensing a few years ago. That is 100% facts. This was supposedly done a long time ago. They reworked this whole way or methodology of providing licensing, but they never implemented it. It was spoken about, it's in that Part 450 licensing, Anyways, this is good news because if they actually implement it, well, the cadence is going to incredibly be increased. Now, why is that? The reason is SpaceX is ready. They're always ready. They literally can get these crafts ready within a couple of weeks. We're not talking about months. We're not talking about many months. Like we saw with the IFT2, the FAA ended up having to come in, do a whole bunch of testing. They had to relook at everything, figure out what went wrong, the whole nine yards. This takes forever, you know that. And then finally you had to have like fish and wildlife come in and check out the ocean, look at the waters nearby, check out there was any kind of foliage that was disturbed or a rodent or something. I'm not joking. The FAA took forever, but then we were finally waiting for Fish and Wildlife to give the go-ahead. 
Anyways, the article finalizes by saying, if SpaceX and the FAA can adjust the licensing process, SpaceX will be able to accomplish its goal of six to nine Starship launches by the end of the year. Now, um, they didn't do the math, obviously, over there at Tesla-Rati. It is absolutely impossible. I did the math. It's just, it, you're not gonna, it's not gonna happen, all right? So to do nine, it would take like, I think it was, 58 point some weeks, you know, doing the math. It was like, what is it? Like 4.34 weeks per month. So to get nine, you'd end up with like 58 point some weeks. Obviously there's 52 weeks in a year. So that's not gonna happen. So forget about nine. Then I was looking at six. Is six a possibility? And it'd end up being like 8.97 months <laughs> or something like that to be able to get six. So. I mean, if you launch today, you'd be able to get six in there. So the bottom line is they're not going to be able to get nine. They're not going to be able to get six. It's just it's just not possible with a six and a half week window. Now, how about if they changed that window and ended up going to from a six and a half week window to a six week window? What would that do? Well, you would end up with approximately seven rockets to be able to be launched. So we would actually get that six to nine that we're looking for. If they were able to now change that to five weeks instead of the original six and a half weeks, moving it back to only five week turnaround, they would end up being able to get about eight rockets up. So is it possible? Yes. Is it likely? No. I'm going to speculate that we will see four starships launch this year. More importantly is I think by third quarter, fourth quarter, before the end of this year, we're going to see the Pez dispenser open and Starlink version two maxis, as I call them, or version threes that they'll probably end up being called by this time because it's so far down the road. They can't just call them version twos, I don't think anymore because it's been so damn long, but whatever they want to call them, the big ass versions of the version two minis that are currently in orbit. There's about 2000 of them currently that are operational. So I really do believe that we're going to see them, that Pez dispenser open and launch out those new satellites. That is going to be amazing because our service is going to get better. Now, what else could happen to improve the cadence? Well, Elon Musk was speaking about this at the beginning of the year, and he was talking about possibly opening up another star base here, three hours north of me on the Space Coast, Cape Canaveral, right? So if that was the case, now all of a sudden things change massively because now you'll have the possibility of launching two at a time. You'll be able to launch a starship from Florida and launch a starship from Texas. Now, all of a sudden, with a five week, let's say turnaround, which is not that big of a deal, it wouldn't be a problem for SpaceX, only regulatory bodies, but turning around every five weeks, now all of a sudden you'll be able to get 16 up. Why? Because you'll get eight in Texas and eight in Florida. Not bad. Not bad at all. So I think things are going to really start speeding up exponentially as things get more further and further down the road as we see most likely another star base be implemented here in Florida. And then also seeing that the FAA will finally get off their laurels with this whole part 450 licensing that they talked about a year ago that they're going to finally implement. I think it just simply makes sense to do a multi-launch licensing in comparison to a launch by launch by launch. That just simply takes forever. That's my personal opinion. What do you think? What do you think about the FAA? Do you think they're going to go through with it and they're going to do a multi-launch licensing or not? Do you also think that Elon Musk will make a star base here in Florida and then have two? that they can launch the starships from. What do you think about that? And finally, what is your prediction on how many starships are going to end up in low Earth orbit as of this year? We have nine months left. How many of these do you think will be launched? My prediction is four. Write it down. <laughs> See if I'm right. Sometimes I'm right, sometimes I'm wrong. I wanna hear from you. Down below, let's have this discussion. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have, throw it a thumbs up. That'll be very helpful. Don't forget to subscribe if you're not already. If you are, thank you. And finally, head over to my website, jchristina.com, where you can find all the photography tools I've invented for you 
and me over the many years and hopefully there's something there that you might like and if there is please pick it up and support me and my family don't forget my merch my teas and everything else please pick something up many blessings to you and your family stay safe stay healthy stay connected and we'll see you in the next one love you all 